This is not a kid-friendly show. <laughs> Yo, what is really good, my dudes? Welcome to another RuneScape news coverage video. Today, we're going to be covering over Invention Batch 2 and what was revealed in the latest stream. This is the last Invention Batch 2 video I'm going to be making before the game actually goes out because it's going to be coming on Mondays. So we won't wait very long for any of this to come out. So I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible because we have a lot to go over. Without any further ado, I want to first start off by talking about machines. Now, before you even want to make any machines, you need to make a generator. There's three tiers of generators, simple, large, and jumbo. Based on the tier of generator you're using, it'll allow something called power, which is the second icon right next to the invention level icon you see here on each one. So for simple generator, you'll receive 100 power, large 125 and 160 for the jumbo. This will dictate how much different machines you can have working on any given generator because machines will require use of that power and you can't build machines that exceed that power limit. So I'm not gonna go into every machine because they're pretty self-explanatory at this point, but here is what the interface looks like for at least one of the machines particularly the auto disassembler so you'll throw in at least three different items that you want to disassemble at the top you see that's the capacity and how much he threw in and it'll have underneath that that blue bar that's how much energy you will need to produce that and keep it running it's going to use divine charges which you do add to your generator that i talked about right before this so you add the divine charges to the generator and they are represented here on this interface based on how much divine charges you have to keep that thing running and then right under that is the output which is where all your components etc will show up and it does show you how long it'll take to disassemble all these for this particular one two days and 52 minutes it is a pretty lengthy process but again remember that it'll happen in the background when you're not playing even when you're offline or when you're doing any other thing you'll be doing this in the background. So for that convenience, it does take quite a while, but that's honestly to be expected. Next, I wanna quickly show the Alker just to let you guys see that it does have the same capacity at the very top, that window that allows you to add things that you wanna Alk. However, in addition to the energy bar, we now have nature runes and fire runes because you're gonna need to add those to this to keep it up and running. If any one of these were to deplete, it will no longer produce any products in this case, the output would be coins. So just bear in mind, some machines require more than just divine energy to keep up and running. So that's all I really wanna to touch on for machines. Let's go into augmented gear themselves. So leveling up your items past level 12 now has a bunch of new benefits, which we're seeing right here. Level 13, we can siphon the item for 50% chance to not consume the siphon. 14, we have an item drain rate, 12.5% less charges when used. At level 15, you can now use an equipment separator. At 16, siphoning this item will no longer consume the siphon. At 17, using equipment separator now has a 25% chance to not use the separator. At 18, the drain rate is reduced by 15%. At 19, Equipment Separator has a 50% chance to not consume, and level 20 Helpful Perks will activate 10% more frequent, which is really interesting. Unfortunately, if you know about Tier 90, Degrade to Dust Armors, it's literally impossible for those to achieve level 20. You see on this screen right here, by the way, this is a level 20 item. This is obviously a Degrade to Dust. It's not actually possible to achieve this level. It's just Jmods boosted up to level 20 just to show you there's going to be a little icon next to perks that do get the benefit of having a level 20 item in this case impatient 3 and scavenging 3 benefit from having a level 20 item unfortunately on release like i said degrade to dust armors will work exactly like they do now prior to the update where you will not be able to get them to level 20 they will be working in the future to make it possible however but on launch not going to be possible the way they want to make it work is when you degrade something all the way down a tier 90 and it's ready to get disassembled you can then create a new piece of armor and transfer that level over to the new one and then get rid of the old one destroy it so that's exactly how it's planned to work but won't be on launch so keep that in mind so with that out of the way i want to go into tools so we got a bunch of new tools we can expect to come with Invention Batch 2. First up, we got the small gizmo bag. This will allow you to store gizmos and free up space. Really simple and pretty straightforward. This does have tiers. So once you get the small one, you will upgrade it to medium and then medium into the large pouch. So yeah, not too much there. Pretty standard and it's all good. Next up, we got the mechanized siphon. This is a device you create. And when you add siphons to it, you can set the level at which you want
wanted to auto siphon your gear. So ideally you would choose level 12 because that's the most ideal place to siphon something. I mean, you can choose whether you want it to siphon weapons, tools, armor, shields, or all. And you can add both normal and crystal siphons. Keep in mind that if you have any crystal equipment and you happen to have crystal siphons as well as normal siphons in the mechanized siphon, it will prioritize crystal siphons over normal siphons, assuming you can have those crystal items. So keep that in mind. Next up, I talked about this in my previous video, and it's the Spirit Tree Rerouter. This is, as I guessed, is a portable spirit tree. So it'll let you access the spirit tree teleport network using this item. It has 10 charges, just like the portable fairy ring. So you create this item, allows you to open up that interface anywhere you are, so long as you have one of these items and just use the teleport from there. Next thing up is just an energy barrel. This is a cosmetic item, so it doesn't actually have any use other than just looking cool. And it's just something that goes into the cape slot and it looks kind of cool, but it's just going in line with like the doctor's outfit, the pogo stick, etc so nothing really amazing just cosmetic but thought i'd mention it next up we have the herb protector just a simple item that when you use it on a herb patch it will protect it from death or disease this will be consumed on every time you use it just like compost wood so you need one for every patch to ensure that it's going to get protected and like i said will be consumed on use next up we got the whetstone this is an item that'll allow you to repair things that you would normally repair on like an armor stand or pay bob to repair it's identical in terms of the cost it needs to the armor stand in your house so it's just basically a portable armor stand these are going to be tradable that's interesting to note and yeah pretty cool next up i talked about this before but it's just the divine omatic vacuum and empty divine charges so i talked about how this is going to automatically be able to take energies that you got from training divination and turn them into divine charges however we now know that you need to create empty divine charges in order to fill them up they will be made with 20 simple parts so you're still going to be utilizing those simple parts and you just use this tool while training divination it's going to have actually two settings one setting where it just simply takes the energies you're collecting and charges it up that way and the alternate setting is where it takes both energies and memories so you're actually left with nothing in your inventory but it'll fill up the divine charge much quicker next up we got the miraculous treatment this is a pretty neat device that will bring any patch aside from any type of farming tree patch so that's trees spirit trees elder trees and fruit trees bring them back to life so anything besides those type of trees herbs allotments anything else will be revived with the miraculous treatment Next up, we have the flat pack depacker. We didn't know what it did previously, but now we know that when you're making flat packs, it has two different settings to use. One setting will allow it to automatically note flat packs, allowing you to stay for much longer, assuming you have something like protein planks. And the second one is an auto disassembler, leaving you with nothing behind as you train on a workbench. Next up, we have the teleportation compactor. This is a device that you want to add your teleportation jewelry to, and you can add up to 20 pieces of jewelry to it to charge it up and it will save you a lot of bank space as well as consolidating a lot of your jewelry into one location so pretty straightforward you just add jewelry to it to keep it charged up and you can use it to teleport to wherever the jewelry allows you to teleport to next up we have the potion reservoir this one does not act as i had previously anticipated so basically what this does is you'll add a potion to it it only works for timed potions things like overloads prayer renewal anti-fire that thing of that sort and what it'll do is auto sip it when the timed potion runs out so it'll resip like an overload as soon as your overload drops so you don't have to do it yourself it is important to note that you can only have one active at any given time you can own multiple of the reservoirs but you may only have one active at any given time probably pretty useful for something like qbd so you don't run out of anti-fires ever it's always just going to keep drinking but you do need to create a new one when it runs out it's only good for the six dose or the four dose that you add to it so you only can add four doses and six doses to a reservoir but once it's used up you need to create a new reservoir next up is the combat dummy mark two this will pretty much work identical to any other combat dummy where it'll allow you to build up adrenaline before a boss many people use combat dummies from treasure hunter before things like raids etc just to build up adrenaline and get the fight started with max adrenaline these are untradeable so it's important to note that and when you use it up it'll be consumed on use so you need to make multiple of these if you want to keep using them however anybody can attack them so as long as one person on your team happens to have one of these you're good to go 
Also, take note that these can only be placed down in the same areas that their treasure hunter counterparts can be placed. So you can't place it just anywhere. They still follow the same restrictions as the other dummies. And make sure you note that these do not give any type of combat experience. So it's just there to gain adrenaline. And the final thing I want to talk about, which we've already known, is the equipment separator. Simply put, this will just separate gizmos from your augmented item. And as I discussed previously, you do need that item to be level 50 in order to use a separator on it so keep that in mind and that wraps it up for everything we've got for invention batch 2 just two more days and we're going to be having all this available to us in game so i'm pretty excited let me know what you guys are excited for most down in the comments below anyways if you enjoyed the video hit that like button if you are not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things runescape related then hit that subscribe button anyways i appreciate you watching i'm out peace oh,